Okay, what's up guys? Um, this is going to be your last review before you take this test. The test only has three problems. Now, there are word problems, but the graphic is kind of set up for you so you can kind of have, you're kind of good to go. Now, look what we have here. You have a 10 by 9 foot garden. If you had a uniform walkway, uniform just means it's the same on every side, as you can see by the picture. So you got a 9 by 10 foot garden, you're building this walkway all around the outside, same on every side. Now the area of this whole thing, the amount of space inside is 306 square feet, find the width of the walkway. So it talks about area, and we know that's length multiplied by width, okay? So I come down here, and I make a parentheses, two of them, where we have length being multiplied by width. So look at your length. So from here to here, we know we have 10 units, and from here to here, we don't know, so X. And from here to here, we don't know, so that'll be X. Okay, so that's two X's in addition to a 10. So we write 2X plus 10. Okay. Now over here, the width, you've got 9 from here to here. And then these are unknown as well, but they both also be X's because they're the same as down here. Okay, so we have two X's in addition to a 9. Okay. Now, we need to simplify that multiplication, so I start drawing rainbows, 2x, 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 9. So again, 2x times 2x, and 2x times 9. So that takes care of that for 2x, and then I take 10 times 2x, and 10 times 9. Okay, now let's multiply these out. Let's find these products. Now remember, when we're multiplying x's, we want 1's as exponents. Put them everywhere, and then nothing here. So 2 times 2 is 4, and then on x, I add the 1 to the 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay, my second product, 2 times 9 is 18, and we put x to the first on that 18, because if we just have the x to the first, that didn't have x. 10 times 2 is 20. And then that would be x to the first. And then 10 times 9 is 90. Okay. So then I simplify that further. The second power is my highest, so I go blank x to the second. And then we're going to have regular x's and then constants, the ones that don't have x. So x to the second, we just have the 4. Okay, regular x, we have these two. We have 18 and 20. Remember, x to the first means it's just regular x. So I add 18 to 20, and that's going to be 38. Remember, you're plusing these. Don't multiply those. That's one thing I see is um, we got people that multiply those, and that's going to be a big mess going forward. Again, you're going to add those. Don't multiply them. Okay, and then numbers without an X, we have um, just a 90, okay? So now this is simplified. Now again, length times width equals area, okay? But I know my area is 306, okay? So I come write that down here. We have 4X to the second power plus 38X plus 90 equals 306, okay? Okay. And now I go to my process of solving my equation, okay? That's what this bottom part's for. So how many answers does the equation have? Well, again, there's going to be two, okay? Now, we have to have this set equal to zero. Right now, it's not set equal to zero, so I have to do that myself. So I'm going to line up blank x a second plus blank x plus blank equals zero. So what do we have? For x to the second, we have 4. For x, we have 38. But, and then for non-x's, we have the 90, but we also have the 306 over here. Well, they have to be on the same side of the equation. So this is a plus 306. So we would minus 306, and that takes me to the zero that I want so badly right there. And then I subtract 306 from 90. Okay. So I take positive 90 and subtract 306, and that's negative 216. Okay, 
Now it's set. Now how many terms are we trying to factor? Well, it looks like there's three. So I need to figure out the greatest common factor, and then I'm going to do my AC method with the table. Okay. So first I'm going to make my GCF box, space parentheses. And then down here I make my T box. Okay. Now down here, I'm sorry I didn't put the, lab the label for the answer, right? Feet equals, that's your answer. So the GCF, remember how we go about that, is our first number in the equation a negative? Well, the first number is 4, it's not negative. So my GCF does not, is not going to be negative. Is x on all the terms? Well, we got x to the second on the 4. We have x to the first on 38, but 216, yeah, that doesn't have a G, that, that doesn't have an x. So I don't put x here, here, or don't put it on any, under any of your lines, not any of them. Okay. And then we go to our GCF calculator. So GCF calculator. And I gotta get mine up. So remember the numbers I'm gonna punch in. We have 438 and 216. So 4, comma, get that right. 4, comma, 38, comma, 216. Okay. So I'm gonna hit calculate, and that gives me a 2 as my GCF. Okay, so it's 2, but just the, the, this plain old number 2. So we bring a 2 out here, put in parentheses, and then we just divide these all by 2, okay? So 4 divided by 2 is 2, and then we still have the x to the second power. 38 divided by 2 is 19. It's positive 19, so I write plus 19, and we still got x to the first. And then I take negative 216 divided by 2 is negative 108. So I write minus 108 since it was a negative, okay? Then I just forget about that, and then I do my ABC from the parentheses, okay? And again, I need to take the A times the C. So A is 2, and C is negative 108, and that gives me 216 negative. So I got a negative, so it would be a minus and I'm trying to get to 19, which is positive, okay? So I start listing my factors. And by the way, A is 2x to the second, okay? So remember that we'll be putting 2s in front of the x's, assuming I can find something. So 1 and 2, 16. Well, obviously that doesn't subtract to 19. 2 and 108. 108 minus 2, nope. 216 divided by 3, 3 is 72. Now, you don't have to be a, a ma mental math whiz to know that 72 minus 3 is not 19, okay? 216 divided by 4 is 54. 54 minus 4 is 50, okay? So we can't go with that. Divide by 5, I get a decimal. So now I go divide by 6, I get 36. Now, 36 minus 6 is uh, 30. Okay, 216 divided by 7, decimal, 216 divided by 8, it's 27, okay? Now, if you're not sure, just take 27 minus 8, and 19 is what we have, okay? So, that's your answers. Now, 19 is plus, so 27 is plus, and when I have a negative up there, the signs have to be opposite, okay? So, it will be minus 8 plus 27. Now, my a is 2x to the second, so I'm going to want to start with the process with 2s in front of the x's, and then minus 8 plus 27. Okay, now GCF, though, so 2 and 8. 2 and 8 gives me a GCF of 2, so divide by 2, and that takes that factor to 1x minus 4. Now, cross that top out. Okay, 2 and 27, what, what's going on with that? Okay, that's just 1. So if I divide by 1, it really just stays the same. So that's 2x plus 27. Now, we did have our GCF of 2 here, so I put that here. And again, 2 times 1x minus 4 times 2x plus 27 is equal to 0, okay? But this didn't have an x, so these are the two factors I want to set equal to 0. 
Okay, so 1x minus 4 could equal 0, or 2x plus 27 equals 0. So dot and circle, so I plus 4. 0 plus 4 is 4, so 1 times x equals 4, so x would have to be 4. Okay, so there's your first answer. Then for my second answer, I subtract 27. Now 0 take away 27 to, gives me a negative 27. And then I take negative 27 divided by 2. Okay. Now at the very end here is the only time I can really get a decimal. So I did get a decimal. But the higher answer is the positive, the positive 4. So the feet that you want to make the outside is 4. So all these x's, 4, 4, 4, 4. That's what I've just found. Remember, area equals 306. Okay, here's the next problem. An athlete throws a discus from an initial height of 6 feet with an initial velocity of 46. I, I want you to write seconds down here. That will be on your test. That, that will be there. Okay? Don't worry about that. Just put it there now because I screwed up. An athlete throws a discus from an initial height of 6 feet and an initial velocity of 46 feet per second. How many seconds is a discus in the air? So the two units are feet and seconds. They're always going to be feet and seconds. So the time is the x unit, and then feet would be the y unit. So per feet per second. And you got to read the problem. Don't put 6. That doesn't say per second. The feet per second is 46. Okay, then enough of him. Now, the discus doesn't go up in a line. It comes up, comes back down. So that would be the graph of the discus's path. Okay. Now, our job is to mark where it begins and where it ends. So, before 46 feet per second, we have 6 feet. So, 6 feet's the beginning. And then I don't have anything else, so 0 feet's going to be the end. Okay, now remember, anytime we have a parabola, okay, we arrange the equation by writing blank x to the second plus blank x, which will be to the first eventually, plus blank equals the variable y. So what goes in for x to the second? Well, there's a no, it's a number that isn't even in the problem. There's a force pulling this discus back down. It's known as gravity. And if we write gravity in a math equation, it's negative 16x to the second. So negative 16 is the x to the second. Now my second blank, that's the feet per second. You can't mess them up. 46 goes in this blank. And then the beginning height, 6, is going to go here, and this 0 feet is going to go in for our y. I just scribble out the y, then put 0. Okay, now I can get the process of solving my equation for the um, x variable. So how many answers? Well, there's 2, because we have x to the second. And unlike the last problem, we are set already. We don't need to rearrange the equation. Okay, how many terms? Well, it looks like there's 3. Okay, so GCF and T. GCF and then the T table. Get okay, pretty lot of room to work here. So remember what we do is the first number in the equation negative. Okay, it is. So we put negative. Is X on all three terms? Well, it's on this term, and X to the first is on that term. But 6 doesn't contain x behind it, so I can't put x here, here, here. And then GCF calculator, the 16, the 46, and the 6. Okay, it's giving me a GCF of 2, so that's the greatest common factor they can be divided by. But again, don't you put x with that. So negative 2, and then I go up and divide by it. So negative 2, 16 divided by negative 2 is positive 8. A negative divided by negative is a positive. And then that stays x to the second. Okay, positive 46 divided by negative 2 is negative 23. So minus 23, x to the first. And then positive 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3. So minus 3. And then we will be doing the ABC from here. Don't you go up here. 
So a is x to the power of 8x to the power of 2. Okay, so a times c. 8 times negative 3 is negative 24. So I got another negative product. That means I would want to figure out the factors by trying to minus to get to 23. 23 being negative. 1 and 24. Well, 24 minus 1 is 23. So we have found it right there. So 23 negative means we'll have negative 24. And the negative here means the signs have to be the opposite. Okay, now a is 8x to the second, so when I set up these parentheses, I'm going to want to start the process and let it work out by putting an 8 in front of each x, the coefficient of 8 in front of each x. Again, that's not how we're going to keep it, but that's a good start. Now, 8 and 1, the GCF is 1, okay? Anytime 1's in the parentheses, it's just 1, so that's 8x plus 1. 8 and 24, the GCF here is 8. See, a lot of people will make a mistake when they try to do it in their head. They'll try to do 2 or 4. No, it's 8. You can divide these both by 8. So that's 1x minus 3. Now, our GCF was negative 2, so I pull that down. And remember, these are multiplication. And at the end, it equals 0. But that doesn't have an x, okay? f1, f2. So 8x plus 1 could equal 0 in one case, and 1x minus 3 could equal 0 in the second case. So I dot my x, I subtract 1, 0 take away 1 is negative 1, then divide by 8. Negative 1 divided by 8 is negative 0 0.125, okay? You can put that as your first answer. Then I add 3 to both sides. 0 plus 3 is 3, dot and circle. So 1 times x equals 3, then divide by 1, and 3 divided by 1 is 3. Okay. Now this is my higher answer, so it takes 3 seconds. Okay. A startled armadillo jumps straight into the air with an initial velocity of 14 feet per second. After how many seconds does it land on the ground? Hmm, this was on the one that we had yesterday. That's fine. Just do it. Okay, so again, seconds, and we have feet and seconds. So it's looking like the same thing as last time, but the di there is going to be a major difference in how we do the problem. But so far, we look for the feet per second. We see we have 14 parabola because he's going to go up and come down okay now here's the first difference is that we don't have a beginning amount of feet so we assume it's zero feet and then he lands at zero feet i do need to see that though okay so what's the force pulling him down it's gravity so gravity blank x to the second plus blank x plus blank equals the variable y Okay, once again, x a second is going to be negative 16. Again, I can't state that enough. Gravity is always negative 16 x to the second. Okay, and then the 14 is the x coefficient. Now here I got 0 feet, so I can delete that line okay, from the equation if we're just going to have a 0. That has a major effect on how I set up the problem. So again, then this zero feet goes in for my y variable. Okay, so going now that the equation's written down, okay, and simplified, there's no parentheses. See, I don't mean to backtrack, but see on that first problem, we had to get rid of those parentheses before we go down here and mess with an, any writing equation, okay? So that's why it's nice to do the parent, get rid of your parentheses here, okay, and set it equal to the area, move it, and so forth. Okay, here we're already set to go. Okay, so ha there's two answers. And again, nice thing here is we don't have to rewrite anything because we're already set equal to zero. Okay, this time there are not three terms, though. There's only one, two. So it would be GCF, and then I would see if we have a difference of perfect squares.
GCF, and then dots. Remember, I set that up. You put two parentheses, and you do a plus and a minus. Okay, so is the first number in the equation negative? Sure is, so negative. Is x on both terms? Well, indeed it is. We have x to the second here. We have x to the first here. So you need to take an x to your smaller power down here. Okay? That's, that differs from the first two where I didn't put x. Here I'm going to because I scribbled out that third one. So we do have x on both. Take the first power. Okay? And then GCF calculate your 16 and 14. Let's see what it says. Okay, two. So you don't want to you want to put negative two with x to the first out here. Okay. So when you go up and divide, you need to divide by negative two with the x to the first. Okay. Okay, so negative 16 divided by negative 2 is positive 8. Then on the x, I take the 2 and subtract 1. Well, that's 1. Then I divide 14 by negative 2. 14 divided by negative 2 is negative 7. And since these x's are to matching powers, we just get rid of those. Okay? Now... Is this, not up here, okay, is this a difference of perfect squares? I mean, you have your minus, or, or first off, let's talk about what, dip, what it has to be. First off, do you have x to the second? Remember, you're not looking up here. You divided it. No, you don't even have x to the second. So if that x is not to the second, NP that sucker, okay? And then this is F1, this is F2. Get those first powers out of there. And you set each of those equal to zero. So negative 2x could equal 0, or 8 times x minus 7 could equal 0, okay? So dot, circle, dot, circle. Here you go straight to division. You don't have to add or subtract. Now, if you forget the rules for 0, just use your calculator, okay? So 0, and then plus 7, plus 7. 8 times x equals 7, and you don't divide 7, you don't divide 8 by 7, okay? You divide by the x multiplier number, which is 8, okay? 8 times some number equals 7. Well, if I take a bigger number, multiply it, and get a smaller number, then it's going to be a, a, a decimal less than 1, 0 0.875. Okay, we go with our higher. That's how many seconds it took, okay? So those are the problems you can expect to see on your assessment, okay? They'll be set up kind of the same way they are here, okay? It's predictable. You just got to know how to carry out the process. The most important thing is knowing on your GCF, you know, when to put an X, when not to. X, X, no X. So don't put X here, here, or underneath, okay? But we have two terms. One has x to the second, one has x to the first. You're darn right we're going to put an x to the first.